Now that it's winter and I'm not able to go outside and get sun for hours a day, what have I changed in my routines to keep my metabolism running healthy and strong? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome back my friends. My name is Sarah. I am known as Carnivore Yogi. Thank you so much for being here and clicking on today's video. Today, I'm gonna take you through my daily routines to stay strong and lean during the winter. Now, I am changing some things, obviously, because I cannot sunbathe any longer. It's a little too cold, and we don't have as much vitamin D here where I live. We still do have a little bit, but not really a lot. So I am changing things, and I wanna share those things here with you in this video. So the one thing that is not changing at all is the fact that I am still getting up every single day and looking at sunrise with bare eyes. I am also going outside barefoot, even though it's cold. This morning it was in the 30s, which I know some of you guys are in northern latitudes and in the UK and some places where it's just really dreadfully cold and snowing. We don't have that here, but it does get cold. So I am still going outside as soon as I wake up looking at the sunrise with bare eyes. Now, typically I do wake up about 20 minutes or so before sunrise, and I use that time as an opportunity to do my daily meditation practice. So I'm still, if I am around my house and there's lights on and I'm up, I will put on my red blue blockers. I will put the blue blockers that I use in the information section for you guys, but I put those things on before sunrise and after sunset. The other thing that I have been doing that's a little different is I've been eating breakfast more days than I have not been. I probably eat breakfast five days a week and I usually eat my breakfast casserole. I'll put a link in the information section for you guys to that recipe. And I have a spoonful of salmon roe to go with that casserole. And that's what I have been having every morning. Now, usually when I go straight out for sunrise, I have a warm beverage. I don't drink coffee. I'm still off of coffee, but I've really been enjoying chocolate salt LMNT with hot water and a little tiny pat of butter. So typically I'll drink that as the sun is coming up. And then after I've sat out there for a little bit, I will go inside, grab my breakfast casserole, salmon roe, and eat that outside barefoot in the grass while the sun is coming up. The next thing that I have added that is different for winter is that I've started to do some cold therapy. Now, I'm going to put a little video over here on the side to show you what that looks like, but I bought a little cold plunge tub. It's a bathtub from Amazon. It was like $59 and I'll link in the information section below for you guys the one that I've been using, but I filled it up with just regular hose water and I am putting food grade hydrogen peroxide in that water to keep it a little more clean and I do dump it out every few days and change it out but I've put that on on my deck and it naturally went to 50 degrees just because of the external temperature. Now this morning I actually put in a couple bags of ice to make it colder and I got it down to 40 degrees by doing that. But I started off by plunging and staying in there anywhere from three to five minutes. I started that off just this week and it feels really good. It's amazing. And getting cold therapy, there are so many benefits for your body. But if you are a mitochondrial haplotype like me, I'm an H. If you are, if your mitochondrial haplotype is one that comes from a northern latitude, your mitochondria will actually heal and repair when you use cold therapy. Now, if you happen to be from a southern latitude, you can still get amazing benefits from cold therapy like brown fat. So we have white fat on our bodies. It's very metabolically inefficient. You can turn your white fat to brown fat no matter what latitude you're from. You can get mental clarity, you can get energy, you can get focus and a reduction in inflammation. You can get all those benefits of cold therapy, but if you happen to have mitochondria that is from a northern latitude the way that I do, you will actually get repairing benefits from that cold. So that is a big thing that I'm changing for the winter months is that I am trying to do a lot of cold therapy, just allow my body to be cold and embrace it. And believe it or not, it actually makes me feel warm. 
The other thing that I have added in for the winter is I am making sure that I'm being consistent with three days a week of high intensity interval training. Now I'm using an app called Future, which I will link in the information section below for you guys. It is, an, there's an introductory rate of $19 a month if you guys decide to use my link, $19 for your first month. And I have a personal trainer that designs workouts for me. So I took my trainer through my basement, showed her the equipment that I have, and she's been designing and building workouts for me. A lot of days I will drag my equipment, my kettlebells, my weights, everything outside and do the workout out there. So I get the benefit of being cold, being outdoors, being grounded, having bare feet on the ground and being in nature. But I do think that high intensity interval training, starting to build some muscle is also going to give me mitochondrial benefits as well as metabolic benefits. Another thing that I'm changing for winter is that I'm trying to have my last meal by two o'clock or three o'clock in the afternoon. So I'm doing a breakfast upon waking with the sunrise and then another meal around two or three o'clock. I'm doing this because I really want my body to go into a deep repair mode at night. So occasionally at five or six o'clock, if I'm feeling a little bit hungry, I will have that chocolate salt element tea with warm water. It's just really nice and soothing and maybe a little pat of butter in there. But I try to eat a larger meal, maybe a big steak with some butter, perhaps some eggs, something around that two or three o'clock window and then cut it off for the day. Because once the sun goes down, you want your body to switch into the mode of making melatonin. When you're eating, anytime you eat, you elicit a little bit of a cortisol res response, which is not a bad thing. Cortisol is not bad, but we don't wanna be making a bunch of cortisol after sundown because cortisol and melatonin oppose one another. What we want to be happening after sundown is that our body is starting to make melatonin so we can go into that deep, dark repair mode. So that is one thing I've changed my eating window, I'm a lot more strict about it now in the winter so that I never eat anything after sunset because I really want that deep melatonin response. I've also decided that I'm not gonna be doing any refeed days during winter unless I just absolutely feel like I'm gonna die without them. And that's something new for me. I was doing a refeed day once per week, but now that it's winter, if you think about it ancestrally, Nothing is really growing this time of year. We have access to meat, eggs, some, you know, my salmon roe, bats, those things. And those are the things that our bodies are naturally going to thrive on. When it's summer, when we have a lot more UV light, UV light actually helps us to deplete glycogen. It's a bit more appropriate to add in a refeed day or to even add some carbohydrates into your diet. But now that we don't even really have that much UV light, it's colder, there's less light, it's a lot less ancestrally appropriate to be cycling in carbohydrates. So that's another thing that I am gonna be changing as far as this winter eating fasting schedule goes. Speaking of fasting, I think that doing fasting a little bit more during these winter months is more appropriate if that's what you want to do. So I'm possibly gonna be playing around with a little bit more 48 hour, 72 hour fasts. I don't really see a need to go much further over that, but that is my plan is to add one of those in maybe every month or so. I'm not gonna force those, but if they feel right and appropriate, then I will add more of those in. The winter again is a good time for you to do more fasting because there's more scarcity. What we've really done in our society is created a, a, an environment where we don't have to experience winter. We're not going outdoors. We have our houses heated. We have heated seats in the car. And trust me, I love my heated seats in my car, but we have made it so that our bodies never truly experience winter. And there are some really amazing metabolic ex things that we can experience during winter by using the cold and by using darkness. So those are a lot of the things that I have changed. I am also putting on my blue blockers as soon as sunset hits. Again, the ones that I use, I will link in the information section for you guys. And if I'm inside on a screen, I use the yellow day lenses. But respecting your relationship, extremely important because we're a lot more sensitive. There's a lot less light and we're a lot more sensitive during the winter when there's a lot more darkness. 
Now to supplement artificial light, I am using a Sperity vitamin D lamp to supplement my vitamin D levels and an EMR tech red light device as well to again, help my body's mitochondrial health to help my energy, to help my sleep, and to keep my vitamin D levels at a really good level and not use any supplements. I also try to walk every night at sunset. It keeps it keeps getting earlier and earlier, but that's something that I'm trying to do is just walk every night at sunset. And then again, as soon as I come in the house, blue blockers on and just try to keep the house really dim. I've replaced most of the bulbs in the house with either blue blocking bulbs or incandescent bulbs. I'll put in the information section below some of the bulbs that I use so that you guys can check those out. And I also use my EMR Tech red light device to illuminate the home as well. So these are just in brief, a few of the strategies that I am implementing and changing for winter. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to drop one in the comment section below and I will try to answer those maybe in another video or in the comment section below. But I hope these tips were helpful for you guys. And if there is something I said in this video that you want me to expand upon, like cold therapy, then again, comment below, let me know, and I'm happy to do another video on one of those topics. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and I will talk with you in the next video. Bye.